All right, we got a motorcycle head here today. Somebody brought me. It's got a broken exhaust stud in it right over there. You can see there's the good one, or I'm using that term loosely, good one. It's the one that's still there, and then the one that's missing. But you look in the hole, it looks a little funky in there. I'm not too sure what's going on. It looks like there's a little more going on than just the broken stud, but whatever. So I had to set this up here. There's a compound angle going on here. This way and this way. So I had to figure out some way to be able to mount that baby up. I had to think about that a little bit there. But fortunately, we got a nice surface over here that banks on the cylinder. So that's the mounting surface. So we know that's flat. And we got the head bolts that we can use to bolt it that way. But I had to tip it this way and tip it this way. So what I did was is I got this big honking angle plate, knee, whatever you want to call it. So I got this baby bolted down nice and tight, indicated it straight. It's got three eighths tapped holes all over the place. So it gives me a lot of real estate to screw to. So then I took this knee, angle plate, whatever you want to call it, turned it sideways. And being that it's got slots in it, it has a wide range of versatility. It allows for a lot of options for locating these holes to screw it tight. And being that that angle knee has a whole bunch of options as well, this worked out nicely. Now I didn't know exactly what that angle was to tip it at, so I had to figure that out. First thing I did was is I put that in on the optical comparator and tried to measure the stud on the comparator. I kind of thought I saw it. It looked like 15 degrees, but I don't think it was. So then I said, well, at least if one stud's there, if I can screw something on the stud, I can indicate it straight up and down. I can indicate it straight left and right and get close to where it needs to be. So I made this. It's a piece of 3 8 shafting right there. And I tapped it 5 16 24, which is what that thread is, 5 16 24. And it's nice true diameter stock right there. And I just put those flats on it for a wrench flat so I didn't get it stuck on there and not be able to take it off. So we screw that bad boy on there like that and just simulate. So when I screwed that thing on there now, that gave me a smooth surface that I could indicate on. So I used that to indicate this thing this way. And then when I thought it was pretty close, I did the same thing, indicated it straight this way. And it looked pretty close. So then I got an indicator like this. This indicator right here, had it in my spindle, brought it down over here, and I actually sweeped the surface in here, right? So you figure when they set this thing up to machine this exhaust port, this exhaust opening here and drill and tap these holes, I certainly doubt they changed the setup from doing that hole to these holes. So I'm gonna guess that this hole right here is on the same plane that's perpendicular to these holes. So that's what I did. After indicating this straight, it got me close and I swept that, it wasn't exact, it was off a little bit. So I adjusted the angle this way a little bit and I adjusted the angle this way a little bit until I swept that surface in there all the way around and I was like within two thousandths all the way around. You know, that's pretty good, two thousandths, that's less than one hair on your head thick, so. That surface isn't clean or anything, so two thousandths I think is pretty adequate. Now this don't look as straight as it did when I first started off. Now I don't know, is that stud bent? I don't know. So I'm just guessing here. Your guess is as good as mine, maybe better. But this is parallel to the plane of travel of the table, which is perpendicular to the spindle. I'm gonna go with that. So then I swept the bore with my indicator. Right there. You know, I put the indicol in the spindle right there, swept that bore right there and called that zero, zero. So now I had a zero, zero location for orientation here. I don't really know where this is. I can eyeball it. But I figured if I put this thing back on here, I can dial out to this with the center of that bore being zero, zero. Now I can dial out to this and figure out what my XY is or a pretty close dimension XY. 
And I'd be willing to bet this xy and this xy are the same, except this is a minus y plus x, and that'll be a plus y minus x. So that's what I went with. Sure enough, this dialed out to be like 813 plus 813 in the x and minus one inch in the y. So what did I do? I plugged that into my program and then I programmed the opposite over here. Plus one inch minus 813 positioned over it with my center drill. And let's take a look. That's pretty close. You know? I can't get the indicator down in there to actually sweep what's left of that hole. But I think that's close enough for what we're doing. So I'm gonna drill that out now and, and I'll get back to you. And uh, hopefully everything goes well. See you soon.